Ladies and gentlemen, today we embark on an exploration of an internet phenomenon, the often misunderstood practice known as trolling. In this digital age, where the world is merely a mouse click away, we find ourselves interacting more with anonymous entities than with our next door neighbors. Among these interactions, a unique practice has emerged, one that often leaves us in a whirlwind of emotions, trolling. On the surface, trolling is seen as a disruptive act, a deliberate attempt to provoke, to confuse, or to incite, a disruptor in the serenity of our online discourses. But have we ever contemplated the spiritual implications of this seemingly chaotic act? Trolls, much like Zen masters, are skilled at exploiting contradictions. Zen masters use paradoxical riddles, known as koans, to shatter our conventional thinking, to force us into a state of mental deadlock, inviting us to let go of logical reasoning and awaken to a higher truth. Isn't this, in essence, what a skilled troll does? They challenge our convictions, our solidly held beliefs, prompting us to question, to analyze, and in some cases to laugh at the absurdity. Is not laughter one of the purest forms of release? A moment of unadulterated existence, a state of enlightenment. The trolls, through their seemingly absurd provocations, quite unknowingly push us towards this enlightened state, one LOL at a time. But let's delve deeper. Trolling also offers a poignant commentary on the duality of existence, of the self. The troll, hidden behind a cloak of anonymity, embraces a second self, a playful self, unrestricted by societal norms or expectations. This dual existence echoes the Buddhist concept of the two truths doctrine, the ultimate truth and the conventional truth. The troll exists in this conventional realm, but in their actions they often hint at the ultimate truth, the inherent contradictions and absurdities of life. Much like the masks used in traditional Japanese no-dramas, the troll's mask provides freedom, a chance to engage with the world from a fresh perspective, a perspective that is often disruptive, but one that equally offers enlightenment and even, dare I say it, entertainment. Thus, my dear friends, the next time you encounter a troll in the winding paths of your digital interactions, pause for a moment. Instead of reacting with immediate disdain, consider the possibility that this encounter is not an obstacle, but an opportunity, a nudge towards self-reflection, and a chance to share a laugh with the universe. The spiritually of trolling, it seems, is not so much in the act itself, but in our reaction to it. As with all of life, it is a mirror reflecting not just who we are, but who we could become. Beings capable of humor, introspection, and perhaps a greater understanding of this cosmic joke that we call existence. Continuing our journey through the spiritual landscape of trolling, let's consider the nature of this digital interaction. Trolling at its core is a dance of minds. A dance not unlike the cosmic dance of Shiva, the Hindu deity, who destroys only to create a new in the whirlwind of trolling, ideas are questioned, deconstructed, even destroyed. But in that destruction lies the potential for creation, the birth of new understanding, new perspective. The troll, in their cleverly crafted provocations, disassembles the conventional. The result can be chaos, confusion, anger. But amid that chaos, can we not find the seeds of enlightenment? It is in this chaos that we are forced to question, to challenge our own perceptions. Is not the troll then a catalyst for change, a force urging us towards mental flexibility? We stretch our minds to understand, to retaliate, or to simply observe and comprehend the spectacle. And in that stretching we grow. Much like the Zen master who prods and pokes at his student's understanding until he attains a state of satori, or sudden enlightenment. The troll, intentionally or not, pushes us out of our comfort zone. It is within this disquiet, this unease, that we might just find the essence of our true selves. Remember, though, the essence of Zen is not in the seeking, but in the finding, not in the chaos, but in the stillness that follows. So, too, it is with the experience of trolling. It is not the troll's act that holds the key to enlightenment, but our response. Do we choose anger or laughter, irritation or introspection? The choice, dear friends, is ours. 
And so trolling, this seemingly disruptive act, offers us a unique perspective on existence. It nudges us, albeit rather vigorously, towards self-reflection and understanding. Perhaps the next time we encounter a troll, we can meet their chaos with our inner calm, their absurdity with our humor, turning the encounter into a stepping stone on our path to enlightenment. In this grand play of the cosmos, we are all actors, donning masks, playing parts. The troll is but another actor, another mask. Uh, perhaps behind the mask of the troll, we can find not an adversary, but a guide, leading us to confront our own prejudices, our own rigidities, and helping us to discover the fluidity, the laughter, and the transient nature of this beautiful cosmic dance. So we find ourselves in the depths of this digital playground, a world of anonymous entities and masked performers, each playing their part in this grand spectacle we call the Internet. Among these players, the troll, our provocateur, our catalyst of chaos, continues to intrigue us. We have observed, analyzed, even philosophized their role, their impact, and the spiritual implications. But what about the path forward? How do we, the players in this game, interact with these modern-day jesters? Let us consider the teachings of Taoism, the idea of flowing with life, of Wu Wei, or effortless action. When the troll strikes, as they invariably will, perhaps the way forward is not to fight against the tide, but to ride it. Instead of resisting, we accept. Instead of retaliating, we observe. We flow with the disruption. We become part of the dance, and in doing so, we rob the act of its power to provoke. The essence of Taoism is in understanding the natural order of things, of accepting and becoming one with the Tao, the way of the universe, much like a tree bending in the wind, we do not resist the trolling. We acknowledge it, we understand its nature, and we let it pass through us, leaving us untouched. In this acceptance, there's a sense of liberation. Free from the constraints of judgment, of anger, of retaliation, we find a new perspective. We find humor, the most human of reactions, and in that humor we find a common ground, a shared understanding. So, dear friends, as we continue on this digital journey, let us carry with us this understanding, this acceptance. Let us remember that each player, each troll, each provocateur is but a part of this dance. As necessary and as transient as we are, when next you encounter a troll, remember you have a choice. You can choose to dance, to laugh, to flow with the Tao. You can choose to see beyond the mask, beyond the disruption, to the human behind the troll, sharing in this cosmic dance. And in that moment of understanding, of unity, perhaps we can find the true spiritual essence of trolling, a reminder of our shared humanity, our shared journey through this brief moment of existence, our shared laugh in the face of the absurdity of it all.